Ever since the 1970s, the entire space industry has been in stagnation. Most of the technology used then is still being used now. The truth is, the space race was a product of the Cold War, and when America won the race decidedly in 1972, there was really no true incentive for any more space exploration. This continued for 30 years until the SpaceX program, which is the main topic of today's video. For the longest time, I have been puzzled by the secretive operations of SpaceX and its ability to make money. I mean, how does it make money anyways? What is its plan for Mars domination? And most importantly, why does SpaceX do what it does in the first place? These are the questions I'm going to answer in this series of videos. The first episode of the SpaceX series, however, would be about its feasibility. Enjoy. Elon Musk founded SpaceX in 2002 right after his success with PayPal. After disrupting the banking industry, he decided that it's not enough. He needs a bigger stage to work on for his next project. So he has chosen the space industry. But his ambition doesn't end there. Not only does he want to build rockets, these rockets have to be the best and are going to colonize Mars. This means a lot of challenges are ahead of him. The first hurdle is the financial feasibility of this plan. At that moment, it was unthink of for a private company to enter into the space industry, let alone excel in it. Building rockets needs hundreds of millions of dollars, so the first order of business for SpaceX to develop sustainably was to make money. How did SpaceX do it? Well, you start with a small rocket to demonstrate your capability. If you look at the selection of SpaceX rockets, its first ever rocket built was the Falcon 1. Comparing to the later Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy, Falcon 1 is really small. This ensures that the cost of making these rockets is significantly lower than its bigger brothers Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy. After the successful launch of Falcon 1 in 2008, SpaceX attracted orders from the NASA by demonstrating its capability as a private company. Furthermore, there is one secret source of SpaceX. It makes rockets at a cheaper cost than its competitors. All of these factors add together, it has made SpaceX a really attractive rocket provider both in the commercial and the public sector. The payments of the early orders plus the fundings from the VCs as well as 100 million out of Elon Musk's own pocket have made the SpaceX Mars program financially feasible. With the financial feasibility out of the way, we can now finally dive deeper into Elon Musk's space master plan. The ultimate goal of SpaceX is summarized at the beginning of the video. SpaceX is trying to make human life multiplanetary by building a self-sustaining 1 million people civilization on Mars. The main rationale behind making human a multiplanetary species is simply to have a life entrance. Earth as a planet is truly not the safest place to live on. Species extinctions are kind of like human death. They are happening constantly. In the past 500 million years of the Earth's history, mass extinction happens roughly every 50 million years. The most recent one happened around 70 million years ago that killed all the dinosaurs. And the scary thing about this is that it happens randomly. You never know if something is going to happen tomorrow. The possible events that could lead to human extinction are things like solar superflare, a reversal of the Earth's magnetic field, global epidemic, asteroids, and so on. Many people would consider these events to be rare and they probably are right, but Elon does not like taking chances. This is Elon's rationale behind going to Mars, other than the fact that it's cool and exciting of course. Furthermore, in order to have a million people volunteering for the Mars exploration, it is a problem of statistics. Just like the Venn diagram shown, Elon has to find enough people in the green region who have enough money and are at the same time excited to go to Mars. Hence the problem he has to tackle before his plan succeeds is to lower the cost of each trip to Mars for its passengers. Last time the US Congress checked with NASA, the cost to send a five-person crew to Mars was $50 billion, $10 billion per person. Elon thinks that to make the blue circle sufficiently large, it needs to cost $500,000 a person, one twenty thousandth of the current cost. That's like looking at the car industry and saying, right now a new Honda costs around $20,000. To make this a viable industry, we need to get the cost of a new car down to $1. 
So how the hell does SpaceX do it? In order to miraculously lower the cost of each trip by 20,000 times, SpaceX began with reusing the most costly part of each trip, which is its stage one. I'm sure you guys have seen this video. The landing of the Stage 1 is not to show off the engineering capability of SpaceX. It is legitimately an important part of bringing down the cost of space travel. According to Elon Musk, the Stage 1 of Falcon 9 is about 70% of its cost, so reusing this booster brings down the cost per trip by a hundred or even a thousand times. Part of the cost reduction will happen when SpaceX takes a hundred or more people to Mars at a time. The rest of the cost reduction is taken care of by a few simple innovations. Refueling the spaceship in orbit, which lowers the cost by 10 times. Manufacturing propellant on Mars, which would cut the cost by another 10 times. Suddenly, not only can the price go down to 500,000 per trip, it can probably go even lower. Elon thinks it's possible to cost 100,000 per ticket. With all of these innovations combined together, SpaceX's vision of putting 1 million people on Mars is no longer a distant dream. To summarize, in this episode, SpaceX has proved itself to be financially sustainable with a long list of customers waiting to send their satellite to the space. It has also done a lot of innovations and redesigns to lower the cost of space travel that serves the ultimate goal of SpaceX, which is to colonize Mars. But there are still a lot we don't understand about the SpaceX program. For example, what is its timeline? How do we get a million people to Mars? Why have we not chosen Venus instead? If you want answers to those questions, stay tuned for the rest of the series. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm really excited about making the SpaceX series. For the longest time I have been trying to understand SpaceX and what it does. I did not make this video because I simply don't know enough about it and could not find a reliable source that has a holistic understanding of the program. But I have done some in-depth research in the past few days and finally found a reliable source of information which I will link below. Once again, I'm Lei. I'll see you all in the next video. Peace. And I I'm thinking of me Baby